Good morning, Trinity. Good Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. Oh, it's such a delight to see all of you this morning. My name is Isaac Martinez. I'm the priest here. Welcome to Trinity. Um, a few notes um, about our service this morning. First of all, it's Easter. Welcome to all of the kids, all of the children. If you um, get bored during the service, which happens, um, Linda and Emily are in our side chapel here. We have activities. For the grown-ups in the room, we're just going to roll with it. If there's screams, if there's yells, we're going to keep going and let the kids have their own service. So um, if you want, uh, uh, feel free to go in there. Um, everything that you need for worship this morning can be found in your bulletins, except for your hymns, which are clearly marked and can be found in the red hymnals in the pew backs in front of you. A quick note about our building. Um, if you've been following us on our uh, newsletter or social media, you may remember that we've had some water damage on that side of the building. And so our restrooms are through that back door, up a short flight of stairs and to your right. Please pardon our appearance as we are working on making Trinity even better um, in the months to come. Um, but for now, it looks a little rough. Please bear with us. Um, after church, um, we will have uh, an Easter egg hunt for the kids. Um, and for those of us who need a little bit more caffeine, we will also have a festive coffee hour um, with Easter breads provided by many of the loving people here in this room. So please stick around, um, connect with old friends, make some new friends, um, and above all, rejoice in the beauty of this gorgeous day. And now, without further ado, please rise and body your spirit as you are able for our opening hymn. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Together let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading for today is from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118. We'll say the psalm responsively with the congregation joining at the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. 
there is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you. For you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and sisters and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. You may be seated. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Jesus Christ is risen today, my friends, and that makes all the difference in the world. The resurrection lies at the heart of our Christian faith because without it, Jesus is just another martyred prophet, just another good man who tried to change his world and failed. As I said last week at our Palm Sunday service, Jesus' crucifixion, his brutal and violent death, was the price that the deathly powers of empire demanded of him, Emmanuel, our incarnate and life-giving God with us. Jesus was willing to go that far, all the way to a cross, to show us just how far God's love reaches. And yet, while some of his preaching and moral teaching is timeless and universally applicable, his good news of a world turned upside down, where the lost are found, the lowly are raised up, victim and perpetrator are justly reconciled, and where love truly is the most powerful force in all of creation. All of that depends on a God who is able to overcome death itself and to prove it by raising Jesus from the dead. Now it must be said, in 2024 that, of course, the resurrection is an assault on our rationality. Dead people don't just come back to life. This isn't a new objection. Even 2,000 years ago, many people relied on that logic to say that the first Christians were at best mistaken and at worst outright lying or even insane to claim that Jesus' disciples saw him in a new body heard his familiar voice, and touched his barely healed wounds. 
And if you're coming this morning with some of those same doubts and questions, you are very much welcome here, curiosity included. The genius of the Episcopal Church's liturgical calendar is that we get the next seven weeks of Easter to look at, dissect, and explore from a variety of perspectives what this resurrection thing might just be about and what it means for our lives now. But today, this glorious Easter morning, we get to share once again in the astonishment of Mary Magdalene. Expecting to find only a lifeless body, the physical symbol of the trauma fresh in her heart, of all the loss, confusion, and deep grief of her last few days, this most faithful woman nonetheless comes out of a deep love for the man that she called teacher, Rabuni, friend. But instead she finds a surprisingly empty tomb. Can you imagine with me for a moment what it might have been like for Mary to have come all this way outside the city of Jerusalem, back to the scene of the state execution of a man who changed her life, who she followed, who she loved. And to add insult to the deep spiritual and psychological injury of watching this man die so painfully, now she assumes that they, perhaps the Judean leaders, perhaps the Roman authorities, took his corpse to an undisclosed location. She could have just given up or given in to the despair right then and there. Or she might have decided that this was truly the end, that the last three years she spent following this would-be Messiah had all been for nothing, and maybe she should just go back home to Magdala and try to build another different kind of life for herself. How lucky for us, though, friends, that faithful Mary, with all the pain and uncertainty and now fear swirling in her heart, that she didn't run away from the disturbed tomb, but that she ran towards her friends, her community, her chosen family of fellow disciples. She knew that she needed them to help her start making sense of what just happened. And so Simon Peter, who denied Jesus, and John, the beloved disciple who stayed at the cross, run to the tomb. They run, perhaps with the same stomach-churning mix of fear, worry, and deep grief. And seeing nothing but the strips of linen that their friends had used to bury Jesus, these men leave with more questions than they came with. But Mary stayed there. She wept, wringing every drop of grief and loss and pain and fear, anxiety and hopelessness out of her broken heart. Even the sudden appearance of two mysterious looking beings, all dressed in white in the tomb itself, cannot break through that emotional cascade. The flood of tears keeps her from recognizing even the risen Jesus himself. It is only when he says her name, Mary, with a tone he knew she would know, does she realize it is him, and all and her life will never be the same. Now she knows, she knows, that the power of God's divine love can overcome death itself, and she just has to go back and spread this joyous news to everyone. My friends, I do not believe that the resurrection is real just because my family instilled that in me from a young age. I don't believe it's real just because we read about it in scripture. I believe, I trust with my heart that resurrection is real because I've seen its power in my own life, changing it for the better. I have felt Jesus call me by name in a voice that breaks through my sadness and fear and doubt. I've seen his resurrection power at work as I survived a homophobic church and small town and now have found deep love and self-worth. I have felt his resurrection power 
as beloved friends help me pick up the pieces of a shattered dream and make something new, leading me to this pulpit. I've known his resurrection power in the stories of our Christian heroes and saints, from my friends and family, and even from some of you sitting right here, of overcoming impossible odds, of finding unexpected healing and wholeness after a tragedy, or simply just making it through another day. I see resurrection power when I take a good long look at where this parish was nine and a half months ago and where we are today. Beloved, the resurrection of Jesus is the source of our ultimate hope that no matter what life throws at us, no matter the challenges we face, the ways we fall short, or the losses we bear, no matter the deep grief and terrible traumas that we endure, and no matter the oppression that we suffer or the justice we cannot find in this broken world, no matter what any of those powers of death have wrought in our lives, they are defeated because today death itself has been defeated. May that victory of love over death be the source and the aim of our profound joy and celebration this morning and of all our days to come. Alleluia. Amen. And now please rise once more in body or spirit as you are able. Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Holy Spirit, one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all The prayers of the people are formed too. In the course of the silence after each bidding, the congregation offers their own prayers either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops Alan and Carol, our priest Isaac, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for get goodwill among the nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. The people of Ukraine and Gaza. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, 
or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. Pray in gratitude. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially those in whose memory altar flowers are given, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace again, welcome again. You may be seated. Now is the time in our service for some few quick announcements for the good of the church. I think you can, I think you got it. You can wing it. So I'd like to welcome you all. Um, I'm the vestry person for the day. My name is Matt Sherman. I'm one of the wardens. I'd like to welcome everybody here. Enjoy the service and happy Easter. Um, as, as Reverend Isaac mentioned, we're in the throes of our renovation. Uh, we took advantage of the incident over last summer <laughs> to reimagine our space. So we've done all of our abatement, we've done all of the roof repairs, so now we're in the next step of trying to rebuild in a new form to uh, use the space in the way it should be today. Um, all the other announcements are in the leaflet with you. Um, one thing that's coming up, St. Luke's is next week, no, two weeks, two weeks away. So we'll be looking for a little bit of help at St. Luke's at uh, the kitchen in Chelsea. I think that's probably about all we have for today. Thank you, Matt. Um, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, it's Easter. Let's celebrate. We have um, uh, uh, Easter breads um, and other assorted goods for coffee hour. Um, please stay and join us for that. Um, uh, before the kids very excitedly go for an Easter egg hunt, I'm imagining, I don't know, but I think it'll be exciting. Um, uh, we do have small um, flowers, daffodils and tulips and such, um, for any family that wants one. Um, we invite the kids to come up after the service is done, grab a little flower, take it home with you. Um, and then we have um, uh, bigger pots of flowers um, for adults and others um, who want a little bit of Easter joy in your home in the weeks to come. Um, and if you have questions, uh, Charlene can direct you, our altar guild mistress. Thank you, Charlene. Um, I think that is everything. Hmm? Oh, the music, thank you. I, I knew I was forgetting something. Um, a very special thank you to Ambrose, Emily, and James, our guest musicians on the violins and cello this morning. Big round of applause. You guys sound lovely. Thank you for your help in making this glorious. All right, I think those are all of the announcements for the good of the church. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
We remember that this is God's table and not our own. Everyone is welcome and everyone is invited to this table if you wish to encounter the real presence of God in Christ at this holy meal. For whatever reason you prefer to receive neither the bread nor the wine, please approach the altar rail as well and simply cross your arms across your chest to receive a blessing instead. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey with or towards God, know that you are welcome and you are invited to this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. And therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary the God-bearer and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of all your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for God's holy people. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
served up. I don't think so. And now please rise one last time in body or spirit as you are able. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And now, beloved, receive this blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Yeah. 